What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Einstein Bagels, Quest Nutrition, many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Uh, Our sponsor today is Rise25.com, which helps service professionals, doctors, lawyers, accountants, dentists, coaches, anyone working clients with one-on-one, stop trading Time for dollars, shift more from one-on-one client work to -to one-to-many client work um, so that they can leverage their time. And you can go to rise25.com, learn more. There's a, you can download a free dream product letter, which helps basically plan your business on one sheet of paper that helps you see the gaps in untapped revenue potential. Companies like Disney, Apple, the sporting industries, they all use versions of the product letter. I am really excited to jump into this. Today, I have a force of nature. The force of nature is Adrian Richardson. And first of all, you don't mess with a hockey mom from New Jersey. That's one. And I like to brag about Adrian that she is one of the top marketing experts around. And Adrian, I don't like to pigeonhole you to even, even though your site says you know, you're a Facebook ad expert, um, you know, because you're so sharp when it comes to the messaging, the copywriting, the funnels, direct response marketing. There's so much more that goes into a campaign that you run for people that I think saying Facebook ads doesn't do it justice for you. So my tagline for you would be, hi, I'm Adrian. I drive cold traffic, people who don't know you, into an automated webinar where you don't have to show up to do it and have it spit out millions of dollars on the other side. How are you? (laughs) So, um, of course, you you work with top people of systems in place to do that, you know, that, you know, it's not just, Put a Facebook ad, a web, auto in a webinar. There's a lot more complicated pieces that go into that. Mm-hmm. And you spent tens of millions of dollars on Facebook. So you've been in the trenches. You know it works. What doesn't? And you have a laundry list of amazing clients. Russ Rafino, University of California, and many more. And the last thing I'll say before I let you actually talk is or I could just keep saying good things about you, um, <laughs> that you may be the only ad expert who can deliver a baby in the back of a moving vehicle. So, Adrian, thank you. I'm honored to have you. Thank you so much, Jeremy. I'm honored myself to be here with you. Talk about the, the Facebook ad piece. I mean, there's the image and there's the copy, right? So what are big mistakes people make with the image? Is there anything surprising you in the past or lately that for images that have worked or have not worked? What's funny with images is I feel like some people are just better at picking other pictures. You know, uh, a, a lot of people, clients that I work with uh, and clients on demand, you know, they pick their pictures and then they send them in and we kind of review them and give them feedback. Right. And it's shocking to me how many people just pick horrible pictures. <laughs> you know, it's you, you, the picture is the thing that gets people to stop scrolling. You know, it, that's what grabs their attention. And when you're, if you think about your own behavior on Facebook and you're scrolling through your phone, what would make you stop in your tracks? Right. You're busy, you're distracted. What's going to make you stop and right. read something? That picture is what's going to make you stop. And so most people do a really terrible job of picking pictures that are just boring or they're very typical. A lot of people will choose the picture of like the woman standing on the mountain with her arms in the air, you know, like that. Everybody runs those pictures. So. They pick very typical common pictures or it's something that's just really not very attention grabbing. Yeah. And that's a very important element of your ad because if they don't stop scrolling, they're never going to read your ad. They're never going to click. So I don't think enough people put enough effort and time into choosing the right pictures. They need to be bright, colorful, grab people's attention. What's one that made you stop in your tracks lately? Or maybe it's one you used or maybe one you saw that someone submitted. I'm curious, um, what's the elements? Because I love that question that you ask is, what would make you stop in your tracks, right? That's a, a big assessment. Anything lately come come to mind for you that um, in the well, past few Well, anim- animal pictures always do incredibly well. The most mm. shared pictures on social media are pictures of animals. 
Uh, and so if, why not take advantage of that? If people love looking at pictures of animals and they love sharing them, then I should use a picture of an animal. So we test a lot of pictures with animals. They typically do very well. Uh, Are there anything, particular animals that you... Um, dogs and cats do best. Know, not sharks or something? Like would a, would a violent picture of like a bear eating something or a shark? It depends that, on your audience. Okay. Yeah, I mean, because you want to keep it relevant at the same time. So you're not just like picking any old animal. Yeah. But if you're talking about being a shark in business and you put a shark in the picture, well, then that would work. Right. If you were running ads to hunters and you were talking about catching bears and you had a picture of a bear, like that would work. Yeah. Um, so you still want to make it relevant in some way. For it's sure. not just about shock and awe. <laughs> There's like a kitten <laughs> and then it goes over like, why are you talking to me about business concept? Yeah. Right. And so if I choose a dog or a cat, which I do a lot of, I try to make the action that the cat or the dog is doing in the picture relevant to the copy in the ad. Right. So am I talking about, like I did a, a picture of a dog chasing something and in there I talked about chasing clients. Right, right. So it, it's still relevant. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Um, you don't want to just put something random. Right. So image, anything else on images? So animals work, anything else um, as far as non-animal pictures? Um, you just... Lifestyle pictures are really good. Hmm. So lifestyle pictures, and what I mean by that is painting a picture of the outcome that the person's life or business is going to look like after you've solved their problem. So, and test positive and negative. So negative would be like, let's say I was running ads for moms and I help moms relieve stress and organize their lives better or something. I might choose one picture of a mom whose house is a hot mess and she looks like she hasn't showered in three weeks and she's like crying, <laughs> sobbing in the corner. And then I might pick a picture of a mom who's just really enjoying her family and she just looks so happy and vibrant and alive. Because That's that for is 30 seconds. The other one is more realistic. No, I'm just right, right. <laughs> And so you can test both the positive and the negative of like one mm. is the situation you're in now right. and one is the what my life will be like after I solve this problem. Yeah. And almost always, I always test, but anyways, but almost always, I'd say 90% of the time, the positive image wins. Really? Yep. Wow. Yeah. I'm surprised. Yep. I know. What about copy? You know, there's there's always a debate, even with top copiers, more copy, less copy. Obviously, it's a, it's not more copy; it's boring copy. You know, but <laughs> but um, have you found anything working with that? Because I know images uh, make them stop scrolling. It's almost right. like like you were saying, the point of the Facebook is to, to get to get the click, but almost the image, the point of that is to get them to stop scrolling, and the yep. copy. It sounds to like get them it, to read, to get, to get the right people clicking. Yeah, so yeah, to make them want to click. Yeah. Well, the the thing with the copy is it's got to create some kind of emotional response and make them curious. Mm. Doesn't matter how short or how long it is. It needs to make people curious mm. and create some kind of response where they feel like you understand them. So yeah. I'm scrolling through my newsfeed. I see this picture like, oh, what's that? And then I read this copy. And as I'm reading it, I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, this person knows me better than I know myself. They know what I'm struggling with. And what's this? They have this thing I've never heard of before that can help me. I wonder what that is. And so you're creating this curiosity and making them want to click. Mm -hmm. And it's really important to use copy uh, in, a, in a language that your client would your prospect would talk about the problem. Uh, and so as you know, a chiropractor, we know that there's consultant speak. And then there's like the way the client talks about their back problem, right? Like, right. you can't talk about vertebrae, this and that, and they yeah. just come in and they're like, just make my back better. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and so when it comes to writing the right. copy, it isn't about impressing them with how much of an expert you are and how much you know, and, and using big words. It's about being they they need to feel understood. You need you need your reader to feel understood right. and like you know their problem better than they do. And you can only do that if you use language that speaks directly to them. Are there certain methods that you teach people to do so they do that? Just talk to the client or do you have them look reviews on different 
sites or forums yep. or you there's know. all kinds of things. So I ask a lot of questions to my clients. You know, I, I talk about, I ask a lot of questions from them. One of the things that I will ask them that usually works really well when someone can't get out of consultant speak is I will tell them if your client is laying in bed at night and they're staring at the ceiling, they can't sleep and they're thinking about this problem and they just can't sleep anymore. It's driving them crazy. They're thinking about it and they roll over and they shake their spouse and they say, what to them? What is it that they're saying to them? How are they talking? Mm -hmm. I can't sleep. If I don't figure out how to do this, blah, 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 blah. You know, whatever it is that they're saying that that's, I can't sleep at night because I'm thinking about this. What are they right. saying to themselves? Right. And I had like a client the other day who had done a landing page and I forget what industry she was in, but it said how to do da, 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 da and feel luscious in your skin. And I said, feel luscious in your skin. And she's like, yeah. And I go, are your clients laying in bed at night going, I really feel I could, I wish I could feel luscious in my skin. <laughs> I go, nobody's saying It sounds that ridiculous stuff. when you say that, right? Right. Nobody's saying, I wish I could feel luscious in my skin. Um, but when we're writing copy and we're really close to something and we're just trying to create something that stands out and sounds different, we can tend to get a little crazy. Right. And, and so that's the very best exercise. And then test it. If you write the copy and you say something out loud and you're like, is anybody walking around in their head going, I wish I could do, I could blah. And like, if they're not saying that to themselves, it's not copy you should use. Right. So there's two other things I want to talk about because I know we're right at the top of the hour. And um, one thing is people, the, it all goes back to which you are, have a high level of genius at is targeting, right? Mm -hmm. All of this is irrelevant. Everything's relevant if you don't have the right target and the person in the page because that's, all of this is not going to, to resonate with someone. What are some do's and don'ts about targeting? I know you have a lot of opinions uh, on this. Well, I can tell you the number one most important thing is that you need to target the problem and not the person. Mm -hmm. My example for that is, uh, there, I can give two examples. So one is, let's say you're in the weight loss space and you're trying to target people who want to lose weight. And you think, well, um, people who shop at Lane Bryant, you know, they that's a plus size clothing store. So if you shop at Lane Bryant, you must be overweight, right? Well, is everybody who shops at Lane Bryant r trying to lose weight right now? Are they looking for a solution right now? No, yeah. not necessarily, right? Some of them might be perfectly happy with the size that they're at and they're not interested in losing weight. And so that's the mistake that people will make in targeting the person. You're targeting Lane Bryant, you're targeting a person. But if I target Weight Watchers or yeah. Jenny Craig, the average person in America is not following Weight Watchers or Jenny Craig if they're not interested in losing weight. Right. That's just not one of those things that you follow, right? right? Or a mistake that people will make is like, oh, I'll target the show The Biggest Loser. Because, you know, if you're over, there's a people losing weight and so people who are overweight might watch that show. Well, I watch that show. I love watching that show. And so that's another mistake where you're targeting the person instead of targeting the problem. You're not following Weight Watchers if you're not trying to lose weight. And, and so it's very important um, to be looking at that. And same thing is like, for instance, if you're uh, in business stuff, if you're in, in B2B or B2C, uh, or B2B, I mean, um, you have to, again, think about who are my prospects following that already solve this problem? Who has already captured an audience for me right that they're there because they have that problem and that person specializes in that because then you can target that person and take advantage of the audience that they've created by targeting them on Facebook. Mm -hmm. and, and so you want to be thinking about um, experts, organizations, publications, groups, Facebook pages, anything like that where people, your people who have that problem are congregating there because they all have that problem. Right. I love that. Um, you know, Adrian, for you, a big part of your life is Facebook and, and also a big part of your life is, is hockey, right? Mm -hmm. um, so my last question talks about hockey. You know, your son is very talented at hockey and, and uh, you're a hardcore hockey mom. Mm -hmm. And um, he obviously trains his body, yeah. you know, but I know we've discussed before how important mindset is, mm -hmm. right, in this. Yeah. So how do you, how are you having him work on his mindset? How does he work on his mindset uh, as far as, I mean, cause this goes, obviously translates into business and life. Yeah. So I'm curious on, uh, he's playing at a very high level. Mm -hmm. um, 
what do you have him do to get his mindset right? It's really challenging, honestly, to do. I mean, he's 11 years old, and, and so trying to teach mindset to an 11-year-old, they don't quite get what that actually means. Um, and so, again, you use language that means something to them as an 11-year-old. <laughs> and the thing that I try to get him, the, the number one thing I'm trying to do with him now, and I've really just started working with him on mindset probably in the last 6 to 12 months. Prior to that, I wasn't even thinking about it. We would just, like, get better at hockey, Right. So now that he's better at hockey, now it's like, well, how do we take you to another yeah. level? And that is by controlling yeah. your mind. Because this is the same thing in business, right? I mean, yeah. Facebook ads, right? You were just honing your craft. Yep. And then you had there were mindset shifts you had to make to go from oh. 400 to 1,000 to 5,000 to 5,000 and whatever percentage. So right. I feel like it's the same same thing. It is. It is. You, you, at some point in time in your business or life, you're working on honing your skill. And then the thing that gets you to the next level isn't necessarily more skill. Like you said, it's a change in mindset. And then that happens at multiple levels as you grow. It's not a one and done thing. Right. And the main thing that I'm trying to focus on with him are two things is that, it, well, it, it all falls down to one thing, and that is focus on what he wants, not on what he doesn't want. Hmm. So he'll go into, you know, oh, I should have passed or I, w I, I didn't do this or I missed my shot or I did. And I so then I try to bring it back and focus on what went right. So when he's going into the negative, I try to right. focus on what he did right and remind him, you know, well, you know, or he'll he had a game where he was playing a bunch of kids that were much bigger than him yeah. and he was scared to death. Yeah, I remember this because yeah. you gave him a pep talk. And yeah. I said to him, I said, you are a very fast skater. Those boys that are really big, they're big, but they're slow. So although they, if they hit you, it's going to hurt a little bit more than usual, but you can avoid getting hit by keeping your head up and by being fast. You know you're fast, right? So I tried to get him to focus on the skill that he had that would help him in that situation instead of him focusing on like, oh my goodness, these kids are huge and they're going to kill me. And, and so I kept trying to remind him, you know, that you have a skill. One of your bit greatest skills is that you're fast. So use that skill when you're out there on the ice to dodge these guys and move around them quickly so that they can't hit you. And, and so I'm always trying to get him to remember the skills that he has and remind him of those when he goes into the negative and then also focus on what he wants. So rather than going into the game and saying, well, this is going to be a really hard game. You know, I don't know if we're going to be able to beat this team. I go, no, 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 no. Let's say I'm going to show up and I'm going to give it my all and we're going to beat this team. And I try to get him to focus on the outcome that he wants to have instead of what he's afraid of. Mm -hmm. And and it's really, really basic. And honestly, for most people listening, that might they might be like, duh. Like <laughs> You know, it's, it's often though so the, the, it's often the fundamental things that we know that we don't practice. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And and so the other thing that I've been doing with him uh, for the past couple months, and again we're start we're talking about mindset for an 11 year old, so it's very basic. But the other thing I've started with him a few months ago is I have him every morning before he goes to school, I have him writing down three things that he's grateful for. Hmm. I also have him write down one thing, just one thing that he wants to work on improving. Not like, hey, there's 10 things I suck at that I need to work on. I pick one thing you want to improve. And then I also have him write down one thing that he has improved on. So maybe something in the past you said, well, I want to get better at my, you know, slap shot. Yeah. And then, you know, maybe a couple months later, his thing is, you know, I've improved my slap shot. So I have him write down three things I'm grateful for. Because when you write, you can't be grateful and miserable at the same time. Like. <laughs> You can't be grateful and unhappy at the same time. So yeah. I always try to get them to focus on what they're grateful for and then write down one thing you want to improve on and one thing that you have improved on. Yeah. And it's working well. It's really helping him. If that doesn't apply to everyone, I don't know what does, <laughs> Andrea. So thanks for sharing that. That's awesome. Sure. I just want to be the first one to thank you. This has been awesome. Where should we point people towards so they can find out more about what you're working on? Well, they can just go to my website, which is adrianrichardson.com. Uh, on head over there, I've got a free um, scorecard there. If you are running ads, it will help you score your ad in five different areas, tell you what you're doing wrong and how to fix it. Um, so that's that's yeah. the best thing I can offer them. Adrian Richardson, A D R E N N E Richardson. We will link it up. Adrian, you rock. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. What I got, you can't buy. Between my eyes, walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a 
future, you'll find the sand right now. I'm feeling like a hundred grand. 